Hi, my friends know me by Asio, Abigail. We're here at Albus Lost doing a little bit of programming. Everybody's been singing your praises. Oh. On the train to meet the wonderful, amazing life of engineer. Please excuse the background noise in the first part of the video. It does get better and I've also learned so much from this video. It'll be better next time. Here we are at Albert Schloss, which is in the old Trocadero Entertainment Centre. It's a bit of a funny progression. I got into doing lighting and doing electrics. Uh, electrics came first. Uh, if we go back 10 years, I was working in sales, working in an office and earning really good money. But I wasn't happy with what I was doing. I was always looking out the window. I found I was low energy. So I decided I needed to do something that I found interesting and also cool um, and I completely changed my whole life. I paid to go back to college to do my electrical installations training um, and to be an electrician. So I studied for a couple of years, worked in a hospital after that, then in a factory, then a bit doing first and second fix on, on building sites. And then sort of fast forward again, seven or eight years later, and I was speaking to a friend just after lockdown. I was working as an electrician and they were working as a lighting engineer. Now, I was working some really long, hard hours, not earning the best money, but still I enjoyed what I was doing, sure. But I found out what they were earning and the hours they were working were better and they really enjoyed what they were doing. So I said, I need to do what you're doing. I need to be a lighting engineer. And then uh, the opportunity came to do an in-store at a club in Mayfair. So I helped out with the electrical side of this install for lighting uh, in a club in Mayfair and it just went from there really. One company gave me the chance to operate the lights at a really well-known light club Egg and everything sort of snowballed from there. I found I really needed a creative out there and it turned out that lighting became that for me. I would go in and I just remember, you know, they say the penny drops. I can remember on one shift, I had tonsillitis, glandular fever. And before the shift, I thought, I am so sick. I've got a really struggle today. And I got behind the desk. And the first time that I thought to look at my phone, it was past two in the morning. So five hours have passed since I started the shift. I was really sick when the time had just flown away. And I remember that moment, the penny dropped, that I was in the right career for me. Something that I really enjoy, something that's a creative outlet but that I also have a passion in. And what I really love about lighting is that it challenges you in so many different ways. There's so much to learn. Um, one of the first tours that I got involved with, I can remember standing in an empty auditorium after everything had been packed away and just thinking that the knowledge that I have now after three or four years of learning could fill one seat in the auditorium. And that really is what I love about engineering. You never stop learning. There's so much more that you can know every day. As soon as your knowledge develops, there's more to build as well. So this is the fixture, the fixture map of the room. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted, so the order in which it's selected on here negates how the effect is spread across the group. So I just wanted to select the group so that I know that it's going to run from right to left if I want it to run from right to left. Um, so now if I select that, go to shapes and effects, create, create dimmer spread. And then I change the spread to three. Now it's running evenly across each three fixtures. So that's exactly what I want it to do so I'm just going to record that where I did it already I'm going to go on there just delete that bit of programming that I did before because it wasn't quite as I wanted it and then I'm going to clear the programmer and there are quicker ways to do this but <laughs> I'm not the quickest <laughs> right there. Now, if I do the same, create a dimmer spread, change the spread to three, 
and then change the selection from there oh, the other way then that will go from left to right then I'll record that back onto that play, playback there clear that then left to right then we've got some dimmer effects in there so if we just have a little look at how that looks so that's all of them dimming that's dimming that way so I was wondering why it wasn't uh, running over the fixtures in a smooth way then. It's because I had the tracking on. So um, taking that off means that the effect is running a little bit smoother across. All on. Right to left. And then to right. Oh, and you're switching through that. Using... Yeah, by pressing these. So the great thing about Avalites, when you're programming, uh, especially, so I'm, I'm programming this to bus, like I said, for the live show, mm -hmm. so that I can control the lights individually during the show. But if I wanted to do a time-coded show um, for, say, a tour, um, then you would essentially make your cue list like this. Mm -hmm. You would have a look at a song, uh, break the song down frame by frame, second by second, and then you would convert your cue list into a time-coded stack. So essentially you would open your time code and this would be running through the different times. When you're running time code, it looks a bit like this. So you have a clock that's running and you would essentially record the timings in between each cue so as you're going through it's recording it and then after that you've got a show that essentially runs perfectly according to the music um, at least that's the aim anyway uh, things aren't always perfect <laughs> And then what I'll probably do is I will add an effect so that I've got all of them on a strobe function because sometimes it gets a little bit crazy. They just want the lights to all be uh, on a strobe or all be doing something a bit more interesting. I've programmed the intensity onto this fader here. Mm -hmm. But if I go on here, if I just clear the programmer, sunstrip and then what i'm doing is i'm creating a dimmer spread across all of the fixtures i'm running it on the super what we call super fixtures so that's all of them and then i'm going to record that as a cue list onto my sunstrips fader and convert that to a cue list I'm then going to clear my programming, set this cue list to sunstrips. Oh, is that the legend, aka Mark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when we're labelling our cue lists, um, the first effect that I put in was all of them on. But now I've converted it to a cue list. That's run that as the first cue. What was that? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I got the blinders there. The brightest light on this stage. Been in my favourite. I'm still learning because I've taught myself a lot of what I know. Uh, the thing with theatre is that usually you have the same performance, you have the same kind of lighting and you want the same kind of order in which the lighting moves through the night as well. So I'm going to program in some looks and some palettes um, so that if I'm not here and say Mark is operating the lights that he can flick through and if they want the wasteland theme which is what we move on to later on in the night 
somebody can quickly put that on and we know for a fact that the lights are going to be exactly as the stage manager wants it, exactly as the performers want it, and so that there's a bit of a seamless transition between all of the stages of the night. Thank you for watching and that is all from us at this time. Let me know in the comments what you enjoyed, what you'd like to see more of. I'd love to do another part or two about Asia, uh, Abby's lighting engineer journey and what she does. Maybe some tutorials as well, um, more in depth to teach you guys some basics because she does so much. She does so much. One video cannot cover her amazing talent and how much creativity and technical skills go into light and engineering. So make sure you subscribe and leave a comment in the section below.